Right, so now we're going to move on to our next talk, which is by Parot Balakrishnan. And Parot is a, is a scientist at the Kerala Forest Research Institute in Thrissur. He focuses on developing the science and science-based decision support tools in the areas of wildlife and biodiversity conservation and has about 16 years of research experience in vertebrate ecology, threatened and fragmented populations, human dimensions of wildlife, evidence-based conservation, and engaging the public in scientific research. So his talk for today is on lessons from snake sense, a citizen science and education project on snake conservation from Kerala. So looking forward, thanks for with Perut Balagishnan from Kerala Forest Research Institute along with the Dr. T. N. Bindu. This talk is Lessons from Snake Sense, a citizen science and education program on snake conservation from Kerala. As you know, India is rich in reptiles with over 500 species and we have more than 270 species of snakes. Snake conservation in India is a complicated issue. Snakes are uh, related to our culture, part of our culture, life of people. But on the other hand, India ranked first in uh, snake bite deaths, and that is leading to the fear and resentment uh, among people. And uh, uh, definitely, that is leading to large scale anthropogenic killing and uh, uh, ending in the population decline of. Uh, species especially in rural areas so on the other hand the researchers also have difficulties in collecting uh, information on the species due to the elusive nature in this background this citizen science program along with uh, an education uh, package they started to understand the patterns of snake kills and role of conservation education in bringing positive changes in human attitude towards snakes. So this uh, particular study is conducted in uh, part of Prashur, Malapuram and Palaka districts in Kerala and the area is uh, rich in many snakes including the big four uh, Minama species also. So the project had three major components. The first one was to assess the knowledge and perceptions of people largely done during the early part of the program that is during 2002 to 2004 we conducted uh, a pre-program survey during the uh, first part that include uh, whether people can properly identify the species uh, whether they know the vinomic status vinomicity of the species how they treat if the uh, if a snake bite happen and there were questions on many myths related to snakes also. So we used photographs of specimens for this program. Uh, and uh, the second component based on the knowledge uh, and perceptions we uh, uh, gained from the participants, we started a large scale education and awareness program. Uh, uh, different types of programs were planned that include awareness classes with uh, experts, workshops, field visits, kiss competitions, uh, information spread through the campus radios and informal awareness happened, uh, conducted whenever uh, an encounter with a snake happened uh, to the related people. So over 2000 people were uh, given awareness on snakes and their conservation importance. So uh, with this we formed a uh, network of citizen scientists to help data collection and also to prevent killing of the non venomous snakes. So uh, this program started in 2003, actually ended in 2013, and uh, so far uh, uh, about 682 volunteers participated in this uh, program. So how much people know about snakes? So uh, we uh, included 12 species for our surveys and uh, due to the uh, shortage of time I'm showing two minimum species and two non minimum species how people responded to uh, our queries. So the first one was uh, the results viper 
So uh, as it is a very common species, people, uh, majority of the people identify them properly, but uh, the students and the uh, uh, females uh, were not very good in that, but the uh, general public, uh, especially those who work in the agriculture or plantation sector could identify the species properly. And almost all the people know it is a uh, highly venomous species. Other one was the Indian krite. Uh, majority of the people, uh, almost same uh, pattern we go for the krite also. Uh, majority of the people could identify the species. The third one, this is uh, a mimic of the uh, krite. And here people uh, had all misconceptions. Majority of the people identified uh, it as a krite and also many thought it is highly venomous species and uh, interestingly the landscape majority of the, in the landscape majority of the biology teachers are more than 90 percent of the female teachers they also couldn't identify the species so uh, definitely a lot of killing of this particular species is happening we also found similar data for the uh, common sand boya uh, people thinking that it is highly venomous species and uh, they often confuse it with the uh, uh, results viper and uh, say it is a venomous species. So after this uh, assessment of the knowledge uh, on snake by people, we started a, a massive education program that included classes to the school, college level, students, uh, general public, uh, women self groups, uh, MCC, all these organized student groups. Uh, and following this, we assessed whether the uh, knowledge on the snakes or the attitude towards snakes uh, changed or not. So uh, we uh, really got a positive uh, uh, result in this the knowledge course. As you can see, the knowledge course increased and uh, the likes goes from the highly disliked to uh, uh, it is a lot of changes happened uh, during the after the awareness program so the similarly the uh, fear scores uh, that is from uh, the phobic to uh, no fear uh, people have uh, majority of the people have reached after the programs so using this network, uh, we could collect information on about uh, 900 kills, individual snake kills, direct human kills, uh, and also uh, more than 1,200 uh, road kills, then also uh, snake kills by agriculture practices and also by kills by pets, especially dogs. So, also, uh, the volunteers could be able to save uh, more than 500 uh, snakes from the direct kills by their intervention or small-scale rescue. So overall, during this program, we were able to collect information on more than 2,700 individual snakes belong 22 species. So this graph is showing the uh, which species is impacted more due to the direct human kills. So as expected, the highly venomous species like the uh, Indian uh, cobra or the clade, uh, then following by, followed by that the mimic the lycodon uh, species also uh, large number got killed in the landscape. So uh, uh, we could also publish uh, published two papers from this data and uh, analysis on the roadkill and other uh, data is also progressing. So uh, what we learned from this program? Uh, uh, so the first one, the data collection through citizen science on elusive species like snake really require a pre-program education or awareness program. Otherwise, uh, we may not able to collect enough data because the knowledge uh, 
on snakes are very poor among the people. Second point is the success of any uh, citizen science program is determined by the continuous and intensive interaction and encouragement of the participants. So we really need the community uh, participation and encouragement. Third one uh, is this particular program happened at a very local scale, only three districts. So uh, if we want to scale up a program like this uh, to the regional or national level, uh, we really need a good platform. Uh, so for that good financial input and efforts are also required, but a platform may not be sufficient because uh, still uh, many people may not be having digital uh, access. So uh, we need few volunteers to collect and add information from them. So uh, these are all some of the lessons we learned from this particular program. So uh, with this, we thank you all for listening. Thanks to the organizers uh, for uh, this opportunity. Thank you. Thank you, Pros, for that really fantastic talk. Um, I hope you have time for some questions right now. Can you uh, unmute your mic? Yeah, Sean, uh, hope you can hear me. Yeah, I can. Um, actually, I, you, you're really working on a really important and fascinating topic. And one of the aspects that you really get into is the concept of human-animal conflict, right? Which is Which is such a big issue across India, right? And I do think the way that you're educating people uh, about snakes and about, you know, what uh, the benefits of them as well as uh, that they serve important ecosystem services is important. But how, so how do you how do you go across that line? Because there's always two sides to human animal conflict, right? So, so how do you really work on that border? I, I'd just like you to comment a little bit more than you did in your talk on that. Yeah, actually, uh, our department is working on uh, multiple aspects of uh, human wildlife conflict in uh, South India, especially in Kerala. So, as you know, there is no uh, unique solution for uh, uh, the conflict. So, every site, every species uh, will be having different behaviors. So, uh, site-specific and species-specific uh, uh, policies should be uh, developed, and we are working on that. And again, the coexistence is the key, and we need to educate the people, and uh, that is the most important thing. And we are working on uh, this aspect in multiple projects. Yeah, I mean, certainly education is important, particularly with something that has such a strong reaction from people, right? So, so actually, re regarding that, um, there's a question about how you feel the attitude about snakes changed among adults compared to kids during the study period. Um, and that generally it's seen that people react first to the sight of snakes before they even try to understand what kind of a snake it is. Yeah, that is an interesting question. As you know, uh, to change the attitude of uh, the adults, it is extremely difficult. They may have many uh, concepts in their mind. So the basic idea is to catch uh, the kids So from the beginning onwards. But unfortunately, our curriculum is not supporting. Uh, and what we found from our study is biology teachers, almost 90, 95% are female teachers. And even during the graduation, they never touch a snake or an animal. So, so uh, in the jar, they will just see this is snake ident identified for examination, practical done. So that really some more practical, actual practical should be practiced. Yeah. Wow, that's very true. Um, I'll just take one one more quick question. It's a methodological one by Paul. What are the like and fear scores mean? Yeah, actually, uh, we scaled it in a uh, five scale, five negative and five plus. So, uh, you know, uh, by sight itself, people uh, will tell, oh, it is snake, so I don't like. So uh, with our education, we are given a few uh, uh, occasions where uh, some of the local rescuers, along with them, 
uh, the people could touch them, especially the kids. So the fear disappeared. So that will completely change their attitude. I see. Yeah. Yeah. I see. So you also have more questions, but I think in the instance of time, we have to move on. But it was really fascinating talking, a really, really important subject that you're doing. So thank you very much for that. Thank yeah. you for joining us. Yeah, thank you. I will also post one of my paper in the group so people can go. Uh, oh, good. Very, very good. Yeah, please, uh, please do highlight that as well. So yeah. thank you okay. so much. Thank you. Thanks. All right. yes. Okay, so we will move on.